On today's show, Toyota introduces a purpose-built taxi for Japan. PSA says that GM's European operations were highly inefficient, and it looks like Wall Street is getting interested in the auto industry again. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Well, have you been watching the stock prices for GM, Ford, and FCA? Looks like the stock market is starting to get interested in the automotive sector again. Over the last three months, Ford's stock price is up 7%. Not a bad return. But General Motors is up 27%, which is quite an impressive gain. And FCA has seen its stock price shoot up 42%, which is spectacular. And over that same time period, Tesla's stock price went up less than 1%. So who knows? Maybe we're at a tipping point where the market is starting to put more value on companies that provide profits and dividends than those that consistently miss their guidance and production targets. Toyota just introduced a purpose-built taxi for the Japanese market called the JPN Taxi. To help with getting in and out, it has a rear sliding door and low flat floors. It also offers wheelchair access. And there's enough space in the luggage compartment to fit two large suitcases and four golf bags. The JPN Taxi is powered by a hybrid system that runs on liquefied petroleum gas and gets around 45 mpg based on the Japanese test cycle. The standard model starts at just under $29,000, while the the top-of-the-line model starts around $31,000. Toyota is targeting 1,000 sales a month in Japan. The JPN Taxi is available at dealers now and will also be on display at the Tokyo Auto Show later this month. And it sounds to us like this is the perfect platform for autonomous ride sharing. The car market in the U.S. is getting flooded by 3.5 million vehicles coming off lease this year. And in a couple of years, that could grow to 5 million vehicles. And now a startup called Fair has created an app for leasing used cars. Fair was started by Scott Painter, who started TrueCar until he was pushed out of the company. He has attracted investment money from Mercedes-Benz, BMW iVentures, and Penske Automotive. Fair buys the cars from dealers and leases them out to people after running a credit check on their driver's license. They can take any car in the program they want and lease it as long as they want, returning it whenever they want with a five-day notice. Automakers have been reluctant to do this themselves, because they're afraid many customers will elect to lease a used car instead of paying more for a new one. What's the fastest turning used electric car in the market? That's coming up next. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Hyundai better drives us. We always wondered how Ford could produce record profits in Europe while GM always lost money there. Back in March we pointed out that Ford's production in the region was 32 percent more efficient than GM's. Now that PSA has bought Opel from GM, we're learning just how bad things were. PSA CEO Carlos Tavares says that Opel's production costs were at least 50 percent higher than those at French factories. He blames inefficient processes. And wait, it gets even worse. Tavares says, quote, Now we are facing the danger that Opel will not be able to meet the emissions ceilings that will come into force in 2020. This is extremely serious and extremely dangerous for the company. Well, here's our Autoline Insight. Clearly, Carlos Tavares knew what he was getting into when he bought Opel from General Motors. So his complaints sound more like bargaining positions that he's going to need to negotiate with the unions in the Opel plants. Nissan recently introduced the all-new LEAF, and now its other electric vehicle, the ENV200, is getting some of that new LEAF technology. The van's range is up 60%, or 62 miles, thanks to getting the new LEAF's 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. Based on the European NEDC driving test, the ENV200 can now travel 174 miles on a charge, and because the pack is the same size as the previous one, it still offers the same interior space. 
And speaking of electrified vehicles, the average used car takes a little over 33 days to sell, but electric cars sell a lot faster than that. According to iccars.com, the Tesla Model S is the 10th fastest selling used car in America. Just ahead of the Tesla is the Ford Fusion Energy. The sixth fastest selling used car is the Nissan Leaf, which only sits around for 25 days. The Prius plug-in comes in at four, the BMW i3 is at number two, and the fastest selling used car is the Fiat 500e, which takes just 22 days to sell and has an average used transaction price of under $10,000. One reason used electric cars sell so well is that they depreciate so much faster. They are truly a bargain for anyone who wants an EV. As automakers get into new areas of technology like ride sharing and autonomy, suppliers have to get into new areas of R&D. And that's coming up next. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Whether it's on television, online, or through social media, AutoLine knows how to effectively get your marketing message to the people you want to reach. Contact Stacy Eman today. The supplier Magna has a mighty R&D effort into all aspects of the auto industry. But on last week's Autoline After Hours, Swami Kotagiri, the chief technology officer at Magna, talked about how the company is shifting its R&D efforts. What role can we play in the uh, ecosystem of the future mobility, right? Oh, interesting. Uh, take an example, if you are looking for a type of a uh, mobility medium, let's say, uh, and you need to have a powertrain platform, or you need to have an electrical electronic architecture as a platform, within obvious bounds, but we can bring that to the table. Uh, and maybe a particular OEM wants to do a variant. Uh, you know, we are addressing that from a platform uh, strategy perspective rather than just components and subsystems, which is our business and we'll continue to do that. But that's, the, that's you know, a, a, a role that we continue to investigate. To learn more about Magna, you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.